Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you are doing well. My sincerest apologies uh, for being late. Um, uh, last minute items popped up that I needed to address, but um, we will get uh, through uh, today's live and it will be beneficial for you all. So I appreciate you guys waiting and tuning in. And um, today we reclaimed 110,000 for Bitcoin. Uh, it was a good day overall for our positions. Uh, Doge is knocking on the door of 20 cents again, uh, which is good. Soul is up. Uh, Tesla it has recovered a lot of what it lost since last week's uh, Twitter storm and feud uh, between Elon Musk and Trump. Uh, today, Musk sent a heart the way of Trump, so maybe the beef has been at least reduced in terms of intensity by a lot. If we're looking at indices, generally they were in the positive. Russell was up 0.5%, Dow Jones up 0.25%, S&P 0.55, and NASDAQ up 0.66%. Now, today a very big milestone was achieved that not many people took into account, and that was the spotting of the first robo taxi in real life. This is a big thing, and it got me to thinking: how much is this robo taxi worth? What can we reasonably expect it to add to the market cap of Tesla in the midterm? I don't know. Long term, I think the longer you go out, the more juicy the projections become. Uh, but let's say we're thinking about you know next three or four years. How much could it add? to the market cap of this company, which is already valued at $1 trillion. And many people argue, uh, including some PIF members, hey, are you looking at the Tesla valuation? Isn't it a bit generous? Are you sure about this one or a can? So let's look over this. So uh, this was the first RoboTaxi sighting. Uh, there's a video of this and it's, you know, it's driving between runners and it, uh, it, if you look at the video, it was actually going a lot more careful uh, than the cars uh, ahead of it and behind it, which were human driven. This is a Model Y, the new Model Y, and uh, it's being used as a robo taxi. Uh, one of the members uh, asked today, hey, this, is, this doesn't look like the cyber cab. Yeah, well, because every Tesla that has hardware three or four is capable of becoming a a cyber cab it's be, it's capable of becoming a robo taxi and how many are there well currently there's around one to two million cars uh, that can become robo taxis that are on the road right now uh, so you know when you're talking about uh, competition there really is none there's no robo taxi potential company uh, that has this large of a fleet already on the road. <clears throat> and so why would people even use robo taxis? Why? What's the appeal of robo taxis? Well, number one, safety. Uh, if you look at the accidents uh, per mile, uh, FSD, full self driving registered one accident per, per every 3.2 million miles in 2023. Now it's even safer. Uh, that versus around one accident per 588,000 miles uh, if the Tesla was driven by a human. So the FSD is way safer than a human, uh, around six times as safe. And around the same number of miles per accident if you're in a Waymo. So Tesla's FSD is, even though it's way more uh, way cheaper, way more affordable than a Waymo. Uh, the cyber cab is estimated to cost around 30000 whereas a Waymo with all the LiDAR and uh, gadgets that you have to add to it costs around 150000 So even though it's around five times as expensive, it's around six times less safe than Tesla. So there's your competition. Um, and uh, lower fares. So... Uh, uh, with a robo taxi, the estimate is around thirty cents to a dollar per mile, which is very similar to a a personal ownership, uh, which is why I think a lot of people may opt for just using robo taxis all the time if they're quick and easy to uh, access, and there are enough of them on the road. 
because they don't have to worry about parking their car. They don't have to worry about insurance. They don't have to worry about buying the car and then selling it later and the depreciation that happens to it. It's basically the same cost per mile. So why even own the car? I think a lot of Gen Z is going to is going to opt for, hey, why complicate my life with ownership? Why not, why just, why not just uh, take a robot taxi everywhere I want to go? And that compares to, so the 30 cents to a dollar per mile compares to around a dollar to 240 per mile for Uber and Lyft. Uh, now, if you look at the uh, fleet size, well, first car was seen today, as I mentioned, in Austin. Uh, estimates suggest, as I also mentioned, one to two million Tesla vehicles currently have FSD capable hardware. That's hardware three and four. And Elon Musk, in a recent interview, claimed that you know there could possibly be a million autonomous Teslas operational by mid 2026. Now, obviously, yeah, Musk has a, a history of being overly optimistic in his timelines. I think a million is out of the question. If we get to a few hundred thousand, that would be amazing. I think. Um, I think probably uh, maybe we get to a hundred or two hundred thousand by the end of 2026, but we'll see. Um, but by 2030, I think it's very reasonable, and this is I, uh, this is a moderate estimate. I wouldn't say this is a bear case, nor would I say it's a bull case. I tried to be kind of in the middle here uh, because I don't think it's. I think it's it's often um, you know equally detrimental to be too bearish as it is to be too bullish. Because if you are too bearish, oftentimes you uh, underestimate the asset that you own. So I tried to take the middle ground here. And so uh, the two to six million by 2030 estimate, uh, that's for number of robo taxis on the ground. Uh, that's based on Tesla's ability to produce one to two million cyber cabs uh, by 2030, which I think is very reasonable, uh, especially considering their new cast technology um, for uh, building cars. And this is assuming a 2026 start, which is what is scheduled. Um, and conversion of around one to four million uh, cars that are equipped with uh, uh, hardware four um, from the projected 10 to 20, uh, 12 million uh, total fleet by 2030. So uh, we're assuming here, you know, anywhere between 10 and 30 percent opt in uh, for people who have cars, own cars that are FSD capable. Uh, into the robo taxi network uh, which i assume is is pretty reasonable uh, so if uh, the two to six million uh robo taxis now uh, if we just take the middle ground here again so that would be a four million estimate for number of robo taxis on the roads in 2030 and revenue per mile uh, let's take the high end here of one per uh, one dollar per mile by the way if it's lower than that then i think probably the number of robo taxis would be higher uh, because um, uh, you know demand for them would be uh, a lot higher but let's assume one one dollar per mile and let's assume the net margin here is 25 percent it actually may be a lot higher than that um, and it wouldn't surprise me if net margin was actually close to 50 percent uh, but let's assume if revenue is a dollar then what's flowing to the bottom uh, line here uh, for Tesla is around 25% of that, which is 25 cents per mile. And Tesla's goal is for each vehicle to, um, to, uh, to service around 60 to 100,000 miles per year. I went with the low end here of that estimate. So 60,000 miles uh, per year. So net income per mile, you have the 60,000 miles times the um, 25 cents that's fifteen thousand dollars per car and they have four million cars on the road that's and so fifteen thousand is what's flowing to their bottom line per car uh, and they have four million cars on the road four million times fifteen thousand uh, is 60 billion uh, so uh, net income from existing business. So if you look at the net income in 2024, that's around 7 billion. And let's assume the net income grows at around 30% per year from their existing businesses. Now, this is, I think, uh, a moderate estimate. If you look at their uh, battery uh, business and it's growing 
close to 100% per quarter. Uh, but if we, uh, but that's a you know smaller uh, uh, business compared to their vehicle business, even though it's the most profitable business. Uh, and I, I think that eventually it will become bigger than their vehicle business. Uh, but let's assume a 30% per year. But and that's kind of, uh, I would say actually that's a. Um, going uh, lean conservative here we're no longer moderate we're kind of leaning conservative uh, but the existing businesses let's assume they grow at 30 percent per year uh, 7 billion becomes 19.9927 billion let's assume that's 20 billion so very close to 20 billion from existing businesses uh, so if we take 60 billion from robo taxi add to it the 20 billion from existing businesses uh, come out with total net income of 80 billion. Now, if you look at the forward PE of Tesla right now, uh, it is actually close to uh, 162. Now, I'm assuming that that's not going to hold you know, indefinitely. Eventually, the PE will moderate. Uh, let's assume here a forward PE of 40 which I think uh, is pretty conservative. Uh, so 40 times the uh, 80 billion uh, gets us to 3.2 trillion. Right now, Tesla is trading at around 1 trillion on the dot. Uh, so that's a 3x here in RoboTaxi, assuming you know 40 forward PE in 2029, uh, which is around three and a half years from now. Um, now, there are a lot of things that could, you know, uh, obviously uh, throw uh, this off, but I think most of my assumptions were rather conservative. And the thing about this type of valuation is that uh, we're we're basing this on you know 2030, the uh, income uh, that we think uh, the the company will generate in 2030. Uh, but investors may in 2029 may not just be looking at 2030. They may be looking at what's what's going to happen in 2035. Uh, so perhaps the you know forward PE you know remains elevated. Certainly, if you look at something like Amazon, uh, then uh, it had a, a forward PE that you know was close to 100 for years, and it maintained that for uh, it, it maintained that elevation. Uh, for a very long time, just because people were thinking, you know, beyond just what's the forward P, uh, what's the, you know, next 12 months of income, uh, they were looking at the potential for this company and, and rightly so. And I think uh, the same will be true with Tesla. So maybe we get a, you know, forward PE that's, uh, and this is very normal for something like Tesla of 80, in which case the instead of the 3.2 trillion, we'd look, be looking at uh, something like 6.4 trillion. So it'd be a 6x. Now, all that, and I haven't accounted at all, at all, uh, for the biggest business uh, that Tesla, I think, uh, will have, uh, which is the humanoid robots. Uh, so. And again, here, people are going to be projecting forward. Uh, so I think, you know, conservatively, you know, anywhere from a three to 10 X is what we're looking at for this uh, company, um, you know, by 2030. And a three to 10 X that is, you know, not contingent on one thing happening, but there are, you know, multiple uh, ways to get there. And that's why I'm, I'm very bullish on Tesla. And so th that's why, uh, you know, I've been, you know, buying in our PIF portfolio Tesla uh, because, and, you know, I, there's been a lot of noise around Tesla. Uh, obviously, you hear Elon Musk uh, saying things that are often kind of wild and uh, that shakes investors' confidence. But I'm focused here on the signal and I'm trying to block out the noise uh, for myself and for you uh, as well. And so even though this is not financial advice, I am sharing my thinking about this company. Do with it what you will. If you'd like to follow my PIF portfolio that I manage for our PIF members, uh, then do become a member 35% off until June 15. Take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, the link to do so is in the description of this video. Uh, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. 
And with that, let me go to questions very quickly. Salamat Khalid, always nice to see you. Salamat, uh, gaming with Fahad. I see, what's your take on Iron's recent offering of notes? I mean, I, I you know, um, one of the reasons why I, I sold uh, what I did last week was because I felt like there's going to be a lot of dilution here. Uh, in order to get it uh, where it needs to be. And I just thought there were uh, more attractive opportunities elsewhere. I'm not saying, you know, it's not a, a good investment. Uh, I'm just saying that, you know, it's it's not a Tesla uh, where, you know, the risk re return ratio, I think is much more favorable. favorable. Uh, Salam Khan. I hope you had a good Eid. Uh, same to you, Mohammed. Wa alaikum salam. Any reason we should consider to sell our lithium with a loss? I, I wouldn't. I, I just think it's a matter of uh, waiting. I think that uh, current prices don't support increased production, but uh, increased production is necessary. And so I wouldn't sell. How to, but that's me. How to calculate opportunity costs. Um, yeah so um obviously you have to you have to weigh you know holding against the opportunity cost of buying something else and uh, for me i think right now prices are so depressed it's very tough to, for me to be on the seller side of any transaction uh zuhair salamat nice to see you hani salam iron down five percent Due to four hundred fifty million dollar in convertible notes. Um, well, Henny, uh, as I mentioned, I did uh, sell iron. I like to sell into strength as opposed to selling into uh, weakness. I sold it last week. Uh, that being said, I think it's a good play. Um, I uh, w wouldn't, uh, and you know, if something like a, a hyperscaler does an agreement with them, it could really pop. Uh, but I just have less visibility uh, into that as I do, you know, something like RoboTaxi and Tesla, and that's why I sold. Uh, but uh, if you'd like to see my uh, price targets, buy below, sell above, then they're on our PIF watch list. I'm assuming, well, actually, uh, you're probably not a PIF member. I, I think you should become one if you aren't. If you are, then just go to PIF watch list to see. Uh, when I would buy, when I would sell, and um, those are up to date. So, um, yeah, definitely uh, use them for inspiration because I think they're very useful. Take a lot of time into coming up with those prices. And with that being said, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Do leave a like if you enjoyed this live. And until next time, make sure to take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you all.